Today I'm going to talk uh, with you about the cyber world. Why cyber stuff matters. So, why it matters? Once you press send, why should you care what happens out there in a virtual world? Before turning to why, let's first identify what cyberspace is. Cyberspace is a non-tangible virtual space that is created by a computer systems. Computer systems such as servers, routers, computers, smartphones, and many others. Those are tangible things, but their operation together has created this vast intangible space that we spent some part of our life. Anything connected to internet is cyber. So our local network, internet technologies, industrial control systems, and many others that control every day of our life. So why does cyber matter? Because the life of every man, woman, and a child on the planet has changed with the marriage with electronic programmable computer and widely available internet roughly 20, 25 years ago. Today, about 2.5 billion people are connected to the internet. Almost every government, military, um, industry are run by internet-connected computers. Internet brought us a wall. There is broad, there is cheap, there is easy, exciting, effective, and most important, beneficial and fun. Just take a look at your apps in your iPhone or iPad. So we can't even, couldn't think, couldn't imagine things like this a few years ago. With your apps, with your computers and internet, you can do so many fun things and effective things. You can talk all over the world uh, by internet, through internet. You could shop all over the world. Your surgeon, for example, from Tbilisi could consult a specialist in Boston right from the operating room. Just count a computer that you own and add to those computers, the computers that you actually use at your offices, hotels, and airports. For example, I counted 12 computers yesterday at my home. I have a friend in the United States that their refrigerators, washing machines are connected to internet. So with everything, there is a good and bad, and there is a macro and micro view of this. Now first talk about the macro level. Take a personal view of the macro level. You and I can get more effective and efficient management of electricity, gas, traffic, healthcare, and many others. By the way, the defense of our country is made more effective and efficient with computerization. That said, that's hackers working for or sponsored by nation state could attack countries' critical infrastructure, such as electricity grid, banking system. So considerably big damage can be made through cyber attack. Imagine no electricity. Imagine no financial transaction and only word of mouth communication for extended period. And by the way, it is also possible to do a physical damage to cyber attack as for example, cyber worm Stuxnet did to Iranian nuclear centrifuges in 2009. Meanwhile, cyber expert, uh, uh, cyber um, spies, for example, could uh, uh, steal countries' top secret and leading edge technology. As we recently heard from uh, Mendiant report, the American company who uh, connected Chinese cyber espionage um, uh, to um, Chinese army. So think the uh, security of your country. So it used to be that war started um, with a strike um, against uh, critical infrastructure and particularly electricity grid uh, ports, airfields with bombers, uh, missiles, and uh, special forces. Today, cyber attack uh, 
could be equivalent of special operations and uh, air strike against critical infrastructure. So why use cyber in this way? Because it's cheap and it's very hard to detect. And by the way, for example, to train and equip uh, uh, SPESNAS or air forces, computers, hackers, and botnets are comparably quite cheap. So I like this guy. As cute, isn't he? <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about um, botnet. Uh, botnet is the network of robotic, infect, robotic infected computers crawled into a botnet. So your computer could be part of the botnet without you knowing about this. Botmaster actually could use some part of your computer's capability to send information for his or her own purposes. So lashing together hundreds and thousands of computers. For example, Batmaster could mount an attack that overwhelms the bank computer system in what is called distribution denial of service attack. So DDoS attack or some other techniques can be used to destabilize country's economy, degrade its critical infrastructure, and tear down its moral spirit. Operating along the seam of war and crime, Cyber criminals actually sparked the debate among experts whether cyber attacks should be treated as act of war or, uh, or criminal act. So now let's talk about Georgia. We all know that in 2008, Georgia became the first country that sustained first other combined kinetic and cyber attack. So cyber attack, um, disrupted Georgia's government information and communication effort, news portal, financial transaction, and internet access. So cyber attack achieved the mission that therefore, uh, before had been assigned to aircraft and artillery. At that time, our dependence on internet technology was not high. It was quite low, but today, our dependence on internet technology increased immensely. And therefore, cyber attack could do much more damage than it did in 2008. So cyber is becoming the fifth domain of war, next to ground, sea, space, and air. So um, you could be... Uh, affected by this as you would be affected, for example, if a attacker drops a bomb um, in the city where you live. So pictured here is the famous bank robber Vela Satin. So when Vela Satin was arrested by FBI, he was asked the question, why he robbed the banks? So he replied, that's where the money is. Modern day Willy Sutton could say the same thing about internet. So as money and people moved online, so did criminals, spies, and pornographers. As Willy Sutton knew how to get in and out of bank, hackers know how to get in and out from your, and I mean your computer systems. Um, by the way, the word hacker was coined in MIT where the computer science student tried to break into university computer to kind of accomplish their assignment earlier rather than wait in a line as computer users used to do back then. And by the way, not all hackers are bad. For example, many of us could, if, could not condone some of the actions such as independent hacker group Anonymous. And many of us even approve some of their exploits. For example, shutting down child pornography site or exposing torture in Africa. So, but what you really have to remember that you are not anonymous, and anything you put your computer is vulnerable. So 
nice shoes you bought, but now some teenage hawker has your banking information. Your kid downloaded some game better than Angry Birds, but now some creep have camera tent and microphone tent on in their computer. And your computer, unknown to you, could be spewing out some uh, uh, spam for illegal pharmacy or child pornography because it was corralled into a botnet. So there are some other sophisticated um, techniques, um, some sophisticated, you know, kind of uh, cyber attacks. Um, but, um, for example, uh, getting into uh, Pentag Pentagon or uh, Mossad computers, as we've heard recently, is quite uh, difficult. But most use, most use penetration technique that is uh, um, known is um, it's quite a simple social engineering technique called spear phishing. So now let me explain what, how does it work. So hacker searching information about you, about your likes and about your dislikes, about your interests, and in case of organization, about this organization, about their work associate, about their interests, about their likes and dislikes. So. He's using open source intelligence tools to find as many as information about you. Now he has a lot of information about you. So he can craft a kind of kind of skillful email. So uh, does your daughter attend, attend a dance class? So you might receive an um, email from your daughter's uh, school teacher telling you about the dance competition and there is attachment. Or you might receive an um, email from your boss with the attachment announcing you about the new procedures in the company. So if you open this attachment or click on the link, boom, Trojan appears in your computer. And your computer might become a part of the botnet, or hackers, for example, could steal the information about you, such as, for example, banking password. So cyber attack is not visible, and it's very, it's not understandable, and people in government are quite slow to react. Now go back to a micro world. For example, in Georgia, we have a quite a good law about, uh, about uh, cybersecurity, and we had a 24 to 7 computer emergency response team. And this is definitely a step forward. But to fight and, and prevent uh, cyber attacks requires consolidation of uh, all efforts and resources at every level. So um, on the micro world, what I have a couple of recommendations for you that we, we have to take into consideration to kind of the decrease uh, the chances to be hacked. This is not a guarantee, but uh, um, I think it could be useful. So protect your computer from up-to-date internet security problem. Um, be careful what you open. Uh, and if you're not sure about this, uh, contact your presumed sender and find out that this email is coming from them or not. Download some um, free applications, um, anti-malware applications such as Malwarebyte or Spybot. Be careful where you put on internet because even the things you raise, it could be traced back. So switch your computer when it's not in use. Talk to your kid and explain them what is wrong and right. Be careful what they are up to, in which site that they visit, or they frequently visit, and to whom they are communicating. And most important, increase the awareness about this issue, because in this world, in this modern world, it really 
really does matter. From the little thing to a big, big thing, it not only hurt, damage your computer, but it could, might be detrimental for overall security. And every one of us, you are a little micro part of this. But you are very important part of this, this new virtual world that is called cyber world. Thank you very much.